Yesterday, I talked about how cancer cells are able to evade the immune system and then result in metastasis, which is the spread of uh, cancer cells into other sites. But how does the cancer transformation process actually start? And why do cancer incidents increase in age? It's because of the cell cycle and the genes that actually control it. The cell cycle is a series of events where a single cell is able to divide and duplicate, and when it goes old or damaged, it's replaced with new cells. And this is why, when you are growing up, what happens is that the cell birth rates are a lot higher than the cell death rates, which is why you are able to grow from a single cell into the beautiful trillion cells that you are. <laughs> As you grow into adulthood, what happens is that, and you stop growing, it's because the birth rate and the death rate actually equalizes. But of course, you're wondering why some people grow continuously horizontally. But that's <laughs> probably because of not the increase in the cell number, but the increase in the size of the fat cells um, due to overnutrition. Anyhow, <laughs> as we grow a lot older, what happens is that the cell cycle rate reduces, and what happens is that the cell death is higher than the cell birth, which is why your grandmother's appears to be shrinking. But most cancer cells acquire between 20 to 80 mutations in the cell co cycle control genes, and this results in the loss of the balance of the cell cycle. <laughs> And what happens when the cell birth increases so dramatically than the cell death, that's when the tumor grows into large cancers, as we know. But luckily, it takes about 15 to 40 years for a single normal cell to get its first mutation and then becomes a cancer viable cell. And this is why cancer incidence increases with age, just like how the risk of accidents increase with uh, the length of your journey. The longer that you're on the road, the higher that you're going to get into an accident. And cancer-causing agents, such as tobacco and secret smoking and ionizing radiation, are essentially like potholes or slippery roads that result in our increased risk of cancer in our lives. But what's most exciting is because the rate of replacement of cells is really high when you're young, so usually what happens is that when a, cancer cell gets when a normal cell gets mutated, it's very essential that it gets destroyed before it actually becomes a cancer. And that is why if you quit smoking before you turn 30, your risk of cancer essentially reduces so significantly that it's almost that of someone who's never smoked. In fact, even if you stop smoking at the age of 50, your cancer risk actually dramatically reduces. Which is why, as a geneticist, I know that genetics is going to change the way cancer is going to be diagnosed and treated in the age of precision medicine. But really, science communication is essential, because 40% of all cancers can actually be avoided if we actually modified our lifestyles, as well as protected the environment so that we inhibit DNA damage to our cell cycle. And that is why it is so important that we celebrate scientific facts communicate them so effectively so that we can not only be able to increase public awareness and public health improvements, but also to impact the necessary political will and change. Thank you very much.